Hello, good evening and welcome to the Great Exhibition Road Festival's Plant Life Drawing Workshop. Today we're going to be learning how to draw your favourite plants. It's going to be really fun and we really can't wait to see what you guys all create today. My name's Emma and I work at Imperial College London and soon I'll introduce you to the amazing Abby and Cathy who will be your teachers for today. So just to make sure we're all ready to go before we start, if you haven't already, please make sure you've got some pens, pencils, paper, whatever it is that you're drawing with and whatever it is you're drawing on. We've also asked if you could bring a leaf or a plant to draw, but don't worry if you don't have one. We've made a worksheet for you with pictures of plants that you can copy. So you'll find the link to that in the chat or in the description below this video. Abby and Kathy will be answering your live questions during this event. So if you've got a question about drawing or plants, please write it in the chat for me and I'll make sure that I get those to Abby and Kathy. Lastly, we'd love to see your drawings today. So please share them on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag XWordFest. We'll put that in the chat so you get the right one. So now I'd like to introduce Abby and Kathy. So Abby is an illustrator working on lots of exciting things like drawing for children's books, doodling all over people's walls with their permission, of course, and teaching with Creative Studio NYO. And Kathy is a plant scientist and teaching fellow here at Imperial. She especially loves it when she gets to teach plant related stuff as her previous research was all about plants and finding out how leaves grow. So let's get started. Have a great session, everyone, and see you a bit later on. Over to you, Abby. Amazing. Well, welcome, everyone. Really excited to get started. We're going to be doing lots of drawing. And just to re-remind you, if you've got lots of colouring, different colours of pens and pencils, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm Abby, said that, but just in case. And also, we have Cathy. Thanks, Abby. Hi, I'm Cathy. Um, I'm a teaching fellow at Imperial, so um, most of the time I spend teaching undergraduates about biology and our students. Um, but I am really, I really love plants. My PhD research was about plants and about leaf shapes. So I have my colours ready um, and very excited to be drawing some plants and leaves this evening. Abby, let's get started. Oh, amazing. I love how many plants you have in your background. <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot of my dead ones. <laughs> but these are some I found on a walk but um but yeah so hopefully if you have found a leaf or if you've got um if you haven't got a leaf don't worry in the description on the YouTube video you can download the worksheet and I've included a picture just in case but I've got my um little half of a leaf I've actually got the other half of it here because I couldn't bear to keep them apart so um yes I'm going to be drawing one half of this guy today and we're going to be doing a mirror image so you're going to get your leaf and you're going to put it on your piece of paper so hopefully you'll see my artist cam in a second and yeah what we're going to be doing is just drawing a mirror image of our leaf that we've found or the one from the worksheet and yeah i want you to all pay real attention to what you can see on the leaf so it's quite hard for you to see i'll bring it a little bit closer but you can see there's different colors different shiny bits and things so um yeah my top tips would be if you mark out first of all where there are any changes in direction so kind of got a little divot around here and then we've got a sticky out bit there and then it comes down and round. And if you just kind of treat it as a mirror image, and if that's really tricky, just flip your leaf over on your center line and draw around the edge. So you can make it as easy or as difficult as you like. Challenge yourself. It's all good here. And then just start adding in the different bits you can see. So I've got some veins here. And yeah, the that that is basically what we're going to be doing you don't have to just use green use any color you want i'm going to change to a lighter green and we're just going to kind of copy across what we can see on our leaves onto the other side and while we do that um mine is looking pretty pretty great right now <laughs> but um yeah we are going to ask kathy our resident plant scientist about leaves and kathy I have a question. Tell us about the different shapes of leaves because they're all different, aren't they? They are. And it's interesting that we're starting off with looking at symmetry. So most leaves are symmetrical. And um, if you have a look at the leaf in front of you, it's probably the same on both sides. 
and most leaves generally are like that, um, but some are not. So one example um, of, this is one of my favorite little plants that I have at home. And wow. if you can see uh, this leaf here, this is a really strange shape and this is not symmetrical. So it has sticky out bits on different sides. And um, so that's a bit of an exception. So just to have a, when you're out and about, um, have a think about whether the leaves that you can see in front of you are symmetrical. Um, and likewise, what Abby has, is kind of showing us on here is an ivy leaf. And I know that's an ivy leaf because of its shape, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of different leaf shapes that we see. And what's really, what I really like about leaves and what I think is really cool is that an ivy plant, for example, always knows how to make a leaf that is that shape. Um, or if you look at the leaf from an oak tree, it always knows how to make a leaf that is um, oak leaf shaped. Oh, I think I um, have an oak leaf. I think oh, nice. Is that an yeah, oak leaf? There we go. There we go. Uh, that's basically symmetrical. Um, <laughs> and we know that that's an oak leaf again because of its shape. So it's it's fun when you're out and about, see if you can recognise the trees and things, even if they're just the leaves on the ground by the different shapes that they are. That's amazing. Abby, one quick question for when we're drawing. I did try and kind of start off a little drawing here on my own, um, but awesome. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at. So am I looking, when I do, when you do the drawing, do you recommend that we look at the page or that we look at the plant that we're drawing? That is a very good question, Cathy. What you want to do, and that this is with drawing anything from life, is you want to be looking at your leaf 90% of the time and just draw it looking at what you're actually drawing only 10% of the time so that's quite hard to do but um, it's a good way to keep you always looking at what you're drawing because your brain fills in the gaps that's the really weird thing about drawing and because we see so many leaves we think we know what they look like and you fill in the gaps and if you actually look you can see really odd things like I always thought that the lines on a leaf only ever came like what were these kind of big middle ones but there's actually really little lines in the middle that then join it's almost like lightning that you can add in um so yeah that would be my top tip always look at your thing that you're drawing in this case half of a leaf as much as you possibly can cool that's that's actually a really um it's a really nice link there to science because um Ooh. Artists have to, as you said, artists and illustrators need to be looking all the time, looking really closely at what it is that they're drawing or studying. And as scientists, that's what we have to do as well. So um, in my research on plants, I spent a lot of time looking under microscopes at leaves and looking in lots and lots of detail um, at really, really tiny structures um, in the leaf and even some of the cells. So cool link there. I think we have a question and um, we have a question from Robin asking which, uh, what plant is the one with the asymmetrical leaves? So this one here in my cool little, if you see it, got a face the pot. Oh, that's um, so cute. This is a fishbone cactus. And yeah, it's uh, it's one of my favorites. If you also want to think of some other um, plants with asymmetrical leaves, you can see in my background, there's a Swiss cheese plant. Um, so sometimes that's quite a common house plant. Uh, you might have noticed one in Emma's background when she did the introduction, and sometimes they have asymmetrical leaves as well. That's a great question. If there's any more, please do send them in. We'd love to answer your questions. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you just write them in the um, chat of the YouTube, that would be great. And then if you want to share with us any of your amazing drawings, if um, you can get your parents or guardians to post them on Twitter or Instagram, then we're using the hashtag E-X-R-D Fest, which I think is just popping up on your screens now because it's much easier to look at than say out loud. <laughs> We'd love to see your drawings. Please do send them in. Oh, oh yeah, we have. absolutely love that. Um, Kathy, I've always wanted to know, are all baby leaves the same? This is a really good question. So um, in, the, in my PhD research, I was looking specifically at how leaves develop. So what happens before we get to like, um, a fully grown leaf. I don't know if, I was, if there's an example somewhere on one of these plants that I can show you. Uh, oh, I don't know, maybe this one here. So uh, let me explain first of all. Um, when leaves start off, when they start growing, like anything that is growing, and they start off really, really small. So they start off maybe about the size of like a grain of sand. And then um, they, they change shape and they 
they grow and change shape at the same time and then they produce this final shape that is the the leaves that we recognize so if you do have a plant in front of you if you have a whole plant in front of you i would encourage you to try and find um some some of the leaves that are a bit smaller and have a look if they are the same size and the same shape and if they have the same markings so i don't know if you'll be able to see this um but i have um another house plant here oh it's a bit of a big one it's oh, got it. like polka dot leaves but nice. the polka dots are only really obvious when the leaves get a bit bigger so the really tiny leaves have that one still does but the really tiny leaves don't have those um dots on straight away and they form a little bit later so lots and lots of kind of cool things about the the patterns on leaves and their shapes and their structures and things but they do like the process of the leaf developing from something that's really really tiny um to its final shape is um to me is really really fascinating that's awesome and kathy we just had a question in um from harriet which is uh what's the purpose of the veins in the leaves do they supply the rest of the leaf with its water slash nitrates wow that's a very astute question <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so it's a little bit like you having uh, having veins, and it's the same name even. So we have veins to allow like blood to go around our bodies and to get like nutrients and things around the body. And it's kind of the same in plants. So veins have um, multiple purposes, but especially needed to get uh, water and nutrients to different parts of the plant. So that's why they need to, as you can see in the drawing that I've been doing, that's why the veins need to extend to all different parts of that plant. Um, and if you've ever seen like a skeleton leaf, if you sometimes see like a partly uh, degraded leaf that's like lost some of the fleshy bits, you can just see the skeleton and that's the veins that are left. And that really gives you a sense of like how many you can see. There's loads and loads and loads of veins in the leaf. Some of them much, much smaller than we can really see um, until we have skeleton leaves. So we have loads of questions coming in. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so don't forget to kind of keep doing your drawings as well. Let me see if I can answer a couple more. Uh, how does, so we have a question from uh, Adri. How does the light influence shape and color of leaves in nature and indoors? Um, that's a great question. So, Oh, there's, there's loads of stuff to say about that. Um, but how does light influence the shape and the color? Well, firstly, if you see, um, if you try growing plants somewhere that is very dark, um, plants get really, really like long and thin. And sometimes we say they look a bit like leggy. Um, so really like spindly and not very happy. So that's the whole plant rather than the leaf. But that's because of lack of light. So the plants really need, need um, good light in order to grow and kind of form those final shapes. Um, in terms of colour, that's a really good question as well. I think um, plant leaves, yeah, I, th I don't know how much exactly the colour kind of influences um, the leaves specifically, but certainly if you have a plant that is not very happy, one of the things that you notice straight away is that the leaves tend to go uh, like a bit yellowy or something. So if I um, I don't have one here because I tried to choose houseplants that looked happy. But if you have um, a houseplant that's got like yellowy leaves, then maybe it's not getting enough light or maybe it's getting too much light. Um, but great question. Ooh, we, is there any tips that you can give people on shading their leaves? So I can see that you're doing a bit of shading there. Um, I've rather abandoned my drawing, but do we have any top tips for people shading their leaves? Well, that is a great question. I um with shading, what you always want to do with any drawing is, or I think personally, is if you move from your lighter colours to your darker colours. So you can keep building on top of what you've already done. And that way you can let some of the lightness of the paper show through as well. So, um, yeah, that's my first tip. And my second tip, which I will do right now, is shade in a colour that you wouldn't expect. So I'm going for purple now. Um, just because it makes your images a little bit more dynamic. And that's always the way with looking at leaves. You can look at them and be like, okay, that's green. But actually, when you look closely, the different light that's even in, the light that I'm in this room is making it appear a little bit brown and a little bit bluey at the same time. So that's the exciting thing about drawing. You don't have to be a faithful reproducer. You can add in random little 
spurts of colour. So yeah, that would be my shading tips for you guys. We have a couple of um, related questions relating to shading. When Ooh. Karina is asking which crayons are you, are, are you using and what pencils are best for shading? So any top tips for people who want to uh, do more art like this? Awesome. Well, so I'm using right now some, I don't know if you could see this, uh, Neo Colours, um, which are, there. I thought I'd use crayons because I thought you guys might have crayons, but I, I have to admit I have got quite posh artist crayons. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about these is they're water soluble, which is a bit bonkers, but I won't show that off right now. Um, but yeah, the best things for shading, these are great for shading because you can see they've got like a huge they're all pigment they're all kind of there's no wood holding it in so you can really get the whole side of it and flatten it out and do shading really really quickly like that but i also use my coloring pencils a lot as well and you can usually if you have a separate bit of paper or you just do it around the outside of the leaf like i'm doing and you can experiment with holding the pencil in angle so i don't know if you can see but i'm holding it like if that was the paper like that um, and you just experiment with the angle and then you'll see that you'll get like a quite a soft shade that way because obviously if you use a pencil the normal way then it takes a long time to cover the same distance so make sure your pencils are nice and sharp and then you've got an even more color that you can use on the side of your pencil so yeah cool thanks we have a lot more plant questions so maybe i can um answer a couple of, couple of those quickly. Yes, a question brilliant. from uh, Ryan and Zoe, which is, do leaves have different shapes to serve different purposes? Oh, now, question. that is a really good question. And the honest answer is that we don't fully know and we don't really understand all of this yet, which is really exciting. So, That's so exciting. So, that means you guys could become plant scientists and then find <laughs> out in a few years time and tell Kathy. <laughs> So there are like standard leaf shapes if you if somebody draws a shape that's like you know kind of like that and um, if you're going to draw what you thought was a generic leaf shape that's the shape that a lot of leaves have um but there there are a lot of differences and we're only starting to understand some of the reasons why this is the case so one um, potential example and this is just an idea that scientists have is that some plants that have um, leaves that have much more kind of gaps in them so a bit like a Swiss cheese plant that you can see behind me and um, with kind of gaps in it or um, a lot of different kind of inny outy bits if you like <laughs> that might be depending on where it is for example in a forest to be able to like let more light through the leaf so usually um, in answer to your question Ryan and Zoe it's probably to do with photosynthesis and um, so that is how a, how a leaf makes food and feeds the plant um, but really it depends on where a plant is like what its kind of life history is and lifestyle is um, and where it is in terms of its like natural habitat but great question and there's still a lot to explore um, relating to that that's so exciting that's maybe really just cool. before oh sorry no you go ahead kathy i was we have so many questions <laughs> um there's a couple more that i just wanted to answer about color um, so we have a question from Pauline of why are leaves different colours? So this relates to um, what Abby's doing right now and using like different colours, especially purples and things. So leaves are different colours because they have um, many, many different pigments in them. So we often have, we usually have green leaves um, and that's due to a special compound in leaves that's called chlorophyll. But there are actually loads of different compounds in leaves and um, that's why so some plants have like more or less of different compounds and then in the autumn time where um, a lot of leaves change color that's often because the chlorophyll is broken down in the autumn and then we start to see some of the other colors and the other pigments that are actually there all the time um, but they're normally kind of obscured by the chlorophyll so all those autumn colors that you get um, really makes you think about plants and the leaf color a bit kind of outside of the usual green um, and I also would recommend having a look at the underside of leaves. So often the underside of the leaf um, is a slightly different colour. So even that leaf Abby's got there, like one side is really like dark and shiny, uh, almost black, and the other side is much more green. So I've got yeah. one here where the underside is, is almost purple. So the top is purple so and the underside is purple. 
Um, why do you have a look at the underneath of your leaves as well? But great questions. Oh, is that is that because the chlorophyll, that's the food producing bit, right? So that only needs to be on the top where the light gets. I yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds plausible, yes. Um, <laughs> plants would normally have um, green on the top and it's usually like more interesting colours or purples and things that you might find underneath. But it does depend a lot. That's such a nice um, motto for life as well, because you probably forget to look at the other side of leaves and actually you can find some really cool things. So definitely, if you guys have been out picking leaves, have a look at what the other side of them look like. Um, this links to a question that we just had from Rebecca. Um, and kind of looking a bit more closely at stuff. And you don't just have to look at these things kind of with your eyes. So you can have a feel of the leaf as well. Like what does it feel like? Some leaves um, feel like a bit fuzzy so Rebecca's question is, um, I have a geranium leaf, why does it feel furry? But this happens to a lot of plants. So if you feel like uh, a succulent, they feel the leaves feel kind of like thick and um, quite funky. Whereas if you have uh, like a normal leaf like this one, it just feels kind of waxy. And some leaves, as Rebecca said, feel a bit more furry. So in the case of um, the furriness, that is, again, you would have to look under a microscope this, but some leaves have um they do have like little furs or little hairs on them um and these are partly well they have a number of uses but partly they can be to um deter predators and things if you imagine that you're a, an ant or a bug or something really really tiny even smaller than that and you're on that surface of a leaf instead of just feeling a bit furry that leaf those spikes and those hairs are going to feel ginormous in comparison to you and they might stop you um, maybe like eating that leaf or attacking it. So this is one reason why some plant leaves have this kind of furry nest on them. Um, but great question. Nice. Abby, shall we move on to our second activity or is there anything else you wanted to say about this shading um, and drawing a symmetrical leaf? Oh yes. We, um, we've had a lot of fun drawing our symmetrical leaves and you guys can keep working on these afterwards, but for now we're going to move on. Um, and, uh, oh, actually we've got one person who shared a picture just before we move okay. on. Should we have, have a little look? That'd be great. Hopefully our, our behind the scenes people will get a picture up I for us. Do that. Da, da, da. <gasps> oh, wow. Nice. That is so good. I genuinely wasn't sure which part was the real leaf then. <laughs> yeah, me too. That oh, that amazing. is brilliant. And that is really nice attention being paid there to the different veins in the leaf as well. And then lovely colour matching. Very, very Brilliant. So, yeah, if any of you guys want to share your pictures of your half a leaf um, leaves, then please do get your parent or guardian or if you're really good at using the computer, if you tweet or Instagram and use the hashtag um exrd best there you go it's on the screen before okay. we move on we have um another quick question from which i think is relevant from sam and max age nine and seven and um, who are both colorblind so find seeing the different shades of green tricky do we have any tips well oh. what we would say is um hold on because we are going to be using some totally different colors and we want you to think really outside the box we don't want you to be worrying about um, which one's green? We, as you will see, Abby is going to take us on a very colourful tour of a plant. And you guys, in a little bit later on, are going to be um, designing some of your own plants. So yeah. what I would say to you is have a think outside the box. Maybe try like feeling your leaves and um, seeing if you can kind of look at them in a slightly different way. But the colours are coming later on. So don't worry too much, as Abby said before. And um, we don't need these. This is the, the beauty of it being art is that your leaf can be any colour you like, um, and they are in real life as well, like oranges, yellows, purples, reds, all kinds of things. It's so true. And the most interesting pictures of leaves often don't involve green at all. You can do things in yellow and purple, which is a pretty crazy coloured leaf. I bet it exists. But yeah, like don't worry about using different greens. Use the kind of shades that you see and just go for it with the colours that you want to, basically. Um, yeah, now we're going to do a little bit of continuous line drawing for the second part of our little workshop. So 
this one you can use whichever colors you like but the continuous line principle is that once you start drawing you keep your pencil on the paper so um well i'll do an example in a second because what we're going to be drawing in this section is what plants are already in our homes so there's quite a big question and one that kathy made me think about and i was like well a basil but actually loads of things in your house are made from plants things that you're wearing even so um what i want you to do is look around see if you can see anything made out of wood and have a go at drawing that so i'm going to do a wooden pencil and just keep your pencil that's i'm drawing a pencil talking about pencils that's quite confusing isn't it um keep your keep your pencil on the paper and you just move it along and record what you're seeing so i'm going to go for that and then there and then we've got the big stripes and yeah it just kind of keeps you free and you can't be too precious about it so you can't like end up with a masterpiece and that is absolutely fine because it's just about the practice and every bit of practice helps with drawing um so yeah kathy what things am i missing apart from my wooden pencil that are made of plants there are so many things and sometimes i think and um, we don't stop to think about all the things that are made from plants but if you have a think about your day so far so whatever you've been up to today and um, have a think about what in that has involved plants and a really good place to start um, is with breakfast so whatever you had for breakfast have a think how that might have involved plants uh so often cereal like cereal that's based on plants that's what i have for breakfast and um, obviously a lot of foodstuffs so uh, wheat is a plant so bread loads of food all of the obvious things like fruit and vegetables and so on and um, but as abby said we actually use plants as a material a lot of the time so wood and um, cotton like some clothing and material comes from plants um, fuel, if we burn wood at all, that comes from plants. There are so, so many things. Even the paper that you're drawing on um, is from plants. Also, I think there's some things that we, we don't even, some of us don't even um, realise are made of plants. So you can get um, medicine that is from plants, which I think is one of the coolest things, um, and a really good reason to um, kind of keep exploring what plants are out there and what's in different plants in case one of them for example could um, give us some medicine that we like a medicine that we haven't even discovered yet so there's loads of stuff out there that is made of plants and um, hopefully you're filling up your whole page with various things that are plant related yeah i'm just going to draw some cornflakes i think which is quite hard but yeah just keep those pencils or pens on your piece of paper and just go crazy this is just a little bit of exercise for your hands because you can exercise your muscles in your hands for drawing that is an actual thing um and oh sometimes i forget but it's okay if you restart in the same place to put your pencil back down <laughs> that's what i reckon anyway um, we've, had, we've had a couple of questions as well um, and also abby i have a question for you which is related to this so um a question from Otto, did we practice much before the workshop? Well, kind of a related question. Um, the answer to your question, Otto, is um, I certainly haven't practiced, as you can probably tell from my rather rubbish drawings. Oh, I love that. That's <laughs> um, really Abby, contemporary. Abby obviously um, does this a lot, but Abby, a question for you um, from me is then how much do you kind of use like nature and things in the work that you do as an illustrator? Like how much do you actually and draw plants and things in the natural world? That is an awesome question. Um, I draw plants a lot, mainly because when I'm drawing children's books, children's climb trees, and you can't just draw a child suspended in the air, you've got to draw the tree as well, because that's the exciting thing about drawing a kid climbing a tree. Um, or um, bouquets of flowers for people's weddings and stuff. But then even things that aren't necessarily um, for other people, I practice drawing every single day. And if you really like drawing, or if you really want to improve at drawing, and so far you found it a bit tricky, everyone can draw. It's just a matter of practicing. And sometimes it can feel a bit hard to practice something when you don't feel very good at it. But that is how you get better. Um, and it's not just some people are really good at it. It's just that the ones that 
have practiced lots, you see it in their drawing. So I go out a lot and I draw what's around me. And especially at the moment, I don't see a lot of people around. <laughs> so I'm often just in the garden drawing some of the plants that I find out there. And that is my practice that makes me hopefully get a little bit better every day. So yeah, I use plants. Do you have, a, do you have a favorite plant to draw? I think um, somebody asked earlier on what our favorite plants are, but do you have a favorite plant um, generally and then a favorite to draw? A favourite to draw. That is such a good point. I really, really love the tree that is in my like garden. It's massive. You're going to be able to tell me what it is, aren't you? I hope so. I don't. It's it's basically it's huge, and it sheds stick sometimes in the year, and then other times it has little things that fall down that look like this, but in green. That yeah. looks like a sycamore. Yes, a sycamore. Yes. I didn't mean to turn this into a test for Kathy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really like drawing the sycamore because it's got like really grand arms that are very like, oh, and then the foliage changes all around the year. So it stays interesting to draw. That is my favorite thing. Oh, my light just fell off. Kathy, tell us about your favorite plant while I fix my light. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I have to have multiple favourites. So I spent uh, four years of my life researching a plant called Arabidopsis, which is, I don't have any of it because it's just a tiny little weed um, and you can see it in like in the cracks. It literally grows like in the cracks and um, between pavements and things. That's called Arabidopsis and that's what loads of scientists work on. Um, so that plant has a special place in my heart. But actually, I really love houseplants, as you can probably tell. And I like houseplants that have really crazy leaves. So this one with polka dot leaves and this one with like round leaves for the Chinese money plant. That's one of my favorites as well. Mm, I think we have um, another picture that somebody has sent in. So oh, if we you. are able to see that, that would be fab before we move on. Oh, <gasps> nice. So good. Oh, wow. You've really got the colors there. Very I love beautiful. that there's no green. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely no green. Although, yeah, and there's some beautiful veins in there as well. And you've really paid attention to everywhere that the leaf has the little jagged edges. So top notch observing there, which is good for art and science. Those little jagged edges, and um, for whoever sent that in, those little like spiky edges, those are called serrations, or sometimes we even call them teeth. So a little bit of like um, actual teeth that you have, we sometimes call the spiky bits on plants, on leaves like that and the teeth. It's kind of interesting that the, some of the words are similar. Like we have teeth. Um, Abby was just talking about that tree having arms. So interesting how we use some of the same words. And speaking of teeth, Kathy, it's time to move on to our third and final drawing exercise, which is definitely the best one. Not that I'm biased, but this one, we're going to be drawing our, our house plants. So, well, that's the first part. Um, we have, or no, I have, not as many interesting plants as Kathy, but I have my mother's basil, which she has lent to me. Um, it looks pretty leafy. So this is this is what I'm going to use as my house plant. If you haven't got one in front of you, don't worry. There's one on the worksheet, which is in the YouTube bio. Um, and yeah, basically, what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to draw this in the bottom half of my piece of paper. And then while Kathy shows us some really cool plants that can actually eat flies, um, we, we can start adding those onto our plant in the top half that we haven't drawn in yet. So we can add in some fly eating plants. And then if you guys want to go crazy and imagine human eating plants, even you can add those on on the top. So the further up we go, the more imaginative I want to see the different things that you're putting in your potted house plant, like a house plant from I don't know, a spooky movie. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan. And I would recommend for this using no green whatsoever, just to challenge yourself. So I'm gonna start in purple, purplish. <laughs> Kathy. Then, Abby, what are you are you still looking at the plant much more than your hand when you're drawing this? Or do you look more at the paper? Do you know what? When we're doing the house plant base, I'm gonna be looking at the house plant quite a lot. And I'm not going to include too much of the pot so we have more room 
for crazy man-eating leaf plants at the top so <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look quite a lot at it at first and just kind of get the different shapes and the different creases of the leaves and add them on and then as we get nearer the top then you can start using your imagination. So you can use the leaves that you've seen around and that you have in your house, or maybe you can see in Kathy's background or on the worksheet for inspiration. Um, and some of the plants that I know Kathy's gonna show us, you could have a go at copying, or you can just do things from your imagination, add some flowers. Um, yeah, so um, Kathy, I know you've got some pretty cool fly eating plants that I would love yeah. to see. Okay, so we have um, of three different carnivorous plants. So carnivorous plants are those that, um, as Abby said, they eat flies, and in some cases, even things that are bigger than flies. Um, and the first one that we wanted to show you is this one here. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, wow. So the first thing that you notice on this one is the really lovely flowers. It's got these like big purple flowers. But actually, it's not the flowers that are interesting about this. It's the leaves. I don't know if you can see, like, there's even squished up, I can't do it backwards, there's even like squished up flies um, on oh. the leaf here. Wow. So when you're inventing your carnivorous plant in your drawing, you might want to think about um, adding some cool, crazy flowers. Um, but these are a bit of a distraction, really, and it's the leaves that are really cool. So the leaves on this one, and um, this is a butterwort, and the leaves are a bit sticky and like a little bit hairy and the flies get attracted to that and then they get stuck um, and they can't move and the plant eats them so they meet a rather sticky end but <laughs> there are loads, <laughs> there are loads <laughs> of different um, carnivorous plants and you might want to take some inspiration from some of these others so um this one so it looks a bit unhappy and this is called a pitcher plant or a saracenia is the fancy name for it and you can see in here, like, these are hollow. So I don't know if you can see inside it. But the oh, flies cool. um, the flies go in these little, like, pitcher bucket things. And, and then at the bottom, um, they get digested in all kinds of, like, digestive liquids. Um, all squished up. And then, again, the plants eat them. And, um, yeah, kind of supplements its photosynthesis and what it can get from the soil by eating stuff as well. But what's really nice about this one, as a bit of a, um, a fan of leaves, is that these really cool pictures are actually modified leaves. So leaves are actually um, really, really sophisticated. And in this case, they've evolved to be able to form this shape and then actually catch the flies. Um, Abby, should we have a look at how I can't there we go, just so we, we can all see um, how Abby's drawing is going. She's got a bit of, there's a bit of a picture going on there. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> yeah. even bigger than this a fly, is... we can think outside the box. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Okay, so I need to go a bit next level with my next one. I'm going to go for Maybe one possible. with actual teeth. Is that mad? That's Well, it's a little bit like a Venus flytrap. I don't know if they're um, actually called teeth, but if you've ever seen, um, this, this is probably the most common or oh, most famous carnivorous plant. There we go. And um, it has these has these kind of traps that like catch flies in them like that. I don't know if you can see it again. Oh, sorry. And what's really cool, I don't know if I can, I don't know if this will work, but I can try and pretend to be a fly. Let's see if we can do this. See if we can make it close. Oh. <gasps> Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> Let's do another one. <gasps> oh, that one closed even tighter. They move wow. really fast. So we think that flat and um, plants don't move very quickly, but actually that carnivorous plant moves really fast. And what's really cool about that is if you ever see one of these and um, people want a fun fact, if you just, so I was just poking it with my pen, which is a little bit mean to the plant because it doesn't <laughs> get to eat my pen. Um, but it's got little hairs on the inside of the traps and it's those hairs that need to be uh, like triggered in order to shut the trap. But they're really very sophisticated because if you just touch the hair once, then the trap doesn't shut. 
but you have to um a fly has to like touch that those trigger hairs at least twice in quick succession in order to make that trap shut mm. and the reason for that is that if this plant say is like in a forest or something and it's raining like a drop of rain falls in the trap it would waste loads of energy if it's shut just because there was a drop of rain so actually it needs to be able to sense that there's like a fly wiggling around in there and then that's what makes it um so that's why i was like wiggling my pen around oh that makes <laughs> terrible sense yeah so i'm trying yeah. to draw a um a leaf with some sticky stuff on it and then the fly is is stuck in it like some kind of maple syrup leaf <laughs> i don't oh. know much about them but there are actually um carnivorous plants that are native to the uk as well so we do have i think i know they look really fun these ones are just from a garden center but we do actually have carnivorous plants um in this country which is cool and we have a question from lily which is what happens if i put my finger inside the tubes of a carnivorous plant mm. um, so great question but if you put your finger inside um of a venus fly trap it would it would try and close on it but these traps are very very delicate so i think your finger would be okay and um, if you put your finger in one of these traps which i definitely can't do because these are far too thin for my fingers um but you it, basically not much would happen but there is some kind of liquidy goo at the bottom and um, but where it gets really thin at the bottom you can maybe um get to that but these plants are eating teeny tiny little flies yeah I think we have some more images oh brilliant i would love to see what you guys have come up with oh beautiful oh, nice. that is a lovely veiny leaf brilliant a lot of so concentration here. yeah Oh, beautiful half a leaf. Okay, so you guys, we're looking at the pictures from before because obviously it takes a bit to post it. But if you're listening right now, post some pictures of the monsters you've created. <gasps> that is brilliant. And the smiley face to top it off as well. Okay. Great veins. You guys have really paid attention to those leaves. And that is exactly what you, we want you to do because you can be a scientist and an artist at the same time by just going out and finding leaves and drawing them and understanding all the weird parts of them. I actually found a really weird leaf, Kathy. Um, look at this. Oh, nice. So it's got like yellow it's edges. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, you can find all sorts of weird leaves. That was on my, my walk, um, my daily exercise. So I'm just drawing some leaves with some teeth on them. Um, Kathy, help me out. What, what carnivorous weird thing should I draw next? How would you... Oh, we could put some flowers on them because um, plants often use flowers to like attract uh, insects and things to them. So if we if we take this one, for example, like a, an, an insect might not think that this plant, this green bit at the bottom with all the leaves looks very exciting, so then it's not very likely that um, an insect or a fly is going to come over and have a look at it. So the flowers can be there to like bring um, Kind of guide insects in so they're something that insects or flies or pollinators might want to come and have a bit of a look at and then they land nearby on the leaf and then they meet their sticky end so definitely think of some like weird and wonderful flowers maybe even though i think leaves are more cool than flowers and um, we can al always add that onto our drawings as well and we would love to see some of the things that you're inventing I'm just making my flower have a sign um, that says harmless flower, flies, welcome. <laughs> you know, just for the, the more uh, literate flies that just want to check. Just, you know, the sign's telling them it's okay, so they should come over and then get eaten by the other stuff. Why, Kathy, why do plants want to eat flies? Um, so carnivorous plants tend to live in places where the soil is um, has not got very many nutrients in. It's quite like poor quality soil. So flies have um, loads of nutrients in them. And this is a way that plants have found to basically get some more nutrients. Um, and it's, yeah, they've, they've evolved these ways to... <laughs> Abby's drawing has um, flies on it that are talking, which is great. Yeah talking flies that's what we get 
<laughs> um, <laughs> as well, when we're thinking about flowers, um, so we talked about like leaf shape a bit, but also have a think about flower shape next time you're out and about. So because it's January at the minute, there aren't loads of flowers around, but especially in the summer, have a think about the different flower shapes that you see, because they, there's a massive variety. So some really, really boring flower shapes, some really weird and wonderful flower shapes and colours as well. Um, and the shape and the colour of the flower can give us some hints about what pollinates it. So, um, for example, like a snapdragon that has really colourful things, really colourful petals to draw bumblebees in, whereas some, a lot of white flowers are actually pollinated by um, flies and moths and things. So they need to be white in order to like stand out so that flies and moths and things can see them. Ooh. We have an art based question, Abby. Oh, oh, do we? So oh. from Harriet, Harriet has asked, um, Harriet says, I'm drawing an orchid and have spent so long on the stalk or leaves at the bottom rather than the flowers. How do you keep your pencil moving and not to get too bogged down in the detail? What a great question, Harriet. I would say, like, I definitely do the same. And don't be down on yourself for doing that because that means you're getting excited about the thing that you're drawing. And that will always translate to a good drawing. Um, but I know how it is. Sometimes you don't have time to spend as long as possible drawing an orchid. So what I try to do to not be bogged down is I'll try and sketch out the whole image really quickly in a very light color or in a pencil that I can rub out. So I'll kind of, if I was doing this drawing, maybe I would draw kind of like circles where I wanted things to be and stalks and things and then work up the detail in each point and then move on to the next one and then work up the detail some more. So you're kind of like, um, moving back and forward over the picture and it's good as well because it gives your eyes a rest from looking at say the stalk of the orchid and then you can look at the beautiful flower of the orchid instead and that is good for your eyes to have a bit of a break and you might come back to drawing the base and see something completely different that you missed before also top tip if you have time is to always come back to a drawing a day later um because you'll always see different things even in different lighting which is really yeah super cool we have um, a few minutes left, but if anybody has even a work in progress of their like super plant and when they're kind of design that we can see, uh, let's have a look at a few of those now. We can look at some more at the end, but let's see what we've got coming in. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that leaf looks a bit like a fern, Abby. Oh, yes, nice. that's what I was going for. Oh, wow. Look I at that it. one. That one's got eyes. Yes, I'm so jealous. I'm going to put eyes on mine. You have that's definitely an invention for plants. I can't think of any plants that have eyes. Oh, brilliant. Other things instead there. Oh, I love these ones. So We've got all the colours. Yeah, and that's going to attract all the flies. Oh, Cutting, brilliant. And sticking. A drawing session going on. <gasps> Gorgeous colours. Oh, I love that. It's like a background of autumn, that one. I like the veins. Wow. It's like a skeleton leaf. Yeah, it's almost like you've got a dead leaf and an alive leaf next to each other. That is really well done. Oh, brilliant. Look at that big saucer that's ready to capture things. Oh, and I'm seeing lots of things with teeth. I love it. Maybe we can make it extra gory and have some blood dripping from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, eyes. That's what I'm going to do. Put some eyes on here. Oh, that one's very artistic. That's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's Everyone, you've done such a great job. Oh, this one's by Erin. I love the bumblebee. Yeah, that's that's a really that's very true to life because bumblebees really like things that are pink. So actually, that's um, oh. that's very well done. Oh, that is brilliant. Fab. Well, we might have time to go back and have a look at any more of those. So do keep sending them in. We love to see what you're drawing. Um, definitely, Abby's has has gone very crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this. I like this ferny bit. I love all of the um. The different textures and you might see that if you're out in in the garden or in a park even at this time of year even in lockdown you will see loads of different like textures of leaves so um things that are like you can see behind me like really boring shapes that are just leaf shape and um, ferns and things like abby's drawing now that have lovely textures to them and like look really soft and you just want to like almost stroke the leaf because it's it just looks really frilly and really nice um, and then things like this one that look a bit more vicious and I probably um, wouldn't go quite so near. 
so true. I'm going to use my fern and I'm going to put a fishing line from it and a little hook and flies like eating, flies like eating, they like eating anything, don't they really? But plants mainly, <gasps> honey, right? Okay, maybe a sugar lump. I'm going to draw a sugar lump on it and then that's how my fern is going to catch its particular fly. <laughs> I'm drawing my flies in green because why not? I have to think of all the really weird and wonderful ways that um, plants attract insects to them. Because apart from eating them, they are really important. Insects are um, really, really important. Like uh, like Erin's drawing of a bumblebee, they're really important for pollinating plants. So that's, um, yeah, plants have to have kind of flowers and things to really attract as many different uh, insects and things to them as possible. Even at this time of year, even like in winter and things there's there's always flies and things and insects and um, interacting with plants in different ways yeah and there's so many that like they're needed for so much of the pollination and crops and our cereals and things that make bread and so flies can sometimes be annoying but they're really important if, if the flies are annoying get yourself one of these yeah <laughs> so good oh Kathy, we've got a question from the city hive it's a bit of a tough question but hey ho we'll go for it how many species of leaves are there um so all different like species of plants have different leaf shapes and i wouldn't even be able to put a number on it it's thousands and thousands probably hundreds of thousands um loads and loads and loads and loads and the diversity is just amazing like as we kind of discussed before like some of these fern shapes that you see really simple shapes and um, don't forget we had shapes like this one so it's saracenia that these are actually leaves um, so, yeah I, I don't even have a number it's it's so many and it's amazing really that to think of um plants having been able to evolve all of these different shapes kind of touching on what we mentioned at the beginning part of the reason why i think they're so cool is that um, an individual species is still always able to make the same shape so like the same, as we said before, like the same oak leaf shape, um, a plant like knows a kind of special genetic recipe to be able to make something that is always that shape. So Abby's plant that she's got here with all of these different shapes, I think um, might be slightly confusing for a plant to know how to make all of these different shapes at once, but they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's true. This plant is definitely an imagination plant, which is why we can go wild. Kathy, why did you want to learn so much about plants? I know we've only got a few minutes before the end of the session, but um, yeah, look, what is it that drew you to plants as a scientist? Um, oh, that is a really difficult question. I oh, I, do really like plants. I like being out and um, like seeing what's kind of in the natural world um, and understanding a bit how they grow. But I think the question that really got me hooked on like, leaf shape and things is thinking, for example, um, as we just said, like how does an oak tree always manage to make leaves that are oak leaf shaped? Or how does, in my case, and um, this plant called Arabidopsis manage to make leaves that are always that shape? Um, and that question got me a little bit hooked. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think plants are really cool. And as we kind of linking back to what we talked about with plants being really useful, we um, we need plants for so much stuff. So understanding how they grow and how they develop um, is really useful. If we have any more images, maybe we could, just before we wrap up, maybe we can see any other creations, if there are any. Um, I don't know if there are. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, wow. Fun. The veins on that are lovely. Yeah, and such nice colours as well. Oh, brilliant. We've got all of it on one page. Oh, I recognise that plant. That looks like a Pizza Express plant. <laughs> um uh, i love that there's like a little demon who's sitting there as well oh brilliant loads of teeth love you <laughs> some of your unsymmetrical ones that you showed us kathy oh yeah yeah the uh you can also you can decorate your pots as well don't forget my pot's got smiley faces on it oh someone's got a chinese money plant that's my favorite <laughs> one wow one with the round leaves is, is amazing oh lots of cut up leaves them up. That's even i like that cut up leaves thing oh that's <laughs> <a> <laughs> So good. Wow. You decorated your pot as well. Look at that angry sunflower. That is brilliant. 
Oh, I love that collection of leaves. Like even in January, you can find a massive diversity. Like you get out in the garden or the park with a pair of scissors um, with your parents or friends or whatever, and especially when it's allowed again, maybe not friends till then. And see how many different shapes you can collect. See how many, just even in a park or a garden or along your street, see how many different leaf shapes you can collect. Some of the things that people just showed us. There's, there's loads of stuff out there. That is such good advice. Yes, and keep drawing as well draw all the things you find have a little notepad collect different images of leaves and when you go one day in the future on holiday maybe you could see what different leaves there are in different places and yeah there's lots of cool things that you can all find but collecting um, just talking about collecting leaves we used to do that like um i think maybe that's one of the reasons that i've ended up being a plant scientist we used to take a little notebook and put, um, put leaves in there and then flatten them and then you can make a picture out of the flattened leaves so that might be one for um, a lockdown activity if anyone wants it. I totally should have done that. Look what I found on my walk. It's a four leaf clover. But I didn't yes. put it in the book, so it's all crumpled up. And I'm really sad. But there we go. Let's <laughs> find another one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Honestly, the first one I've ever found in my life. Anyway, brilliant. Everyone, you've done such a great job. I don't really want to go. And Kathy, thank you for answering so many cool plant questions and everything. That was amazing. Thank um, you, Abby. Oh, that's, that is quite all right. And everyone keep drawing and keep posting them. We would love to see more of your drawings. So yeah, don't be shy. Yeah, um, we'd love to see them after the workshop. Please keep do keep putting them on there. Keep using the hashtag. And we'd love to see what you've got. And we should probably hand back over to Emma. <gasps> yes, we shall. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Your pictures are amazing. We love looking at those behind the scenes uh, on Twitter and reading all your amazing questions and comments in the chat. So please do keep sending your pictures in. We'd love to see them today, tomorrow, the weekend, whenever you get time to finish off your beautiful drawings. Uh, we love seeing them. So do keep sending those in using the hashtag XRudFest. Um, we really hope you enjoyed yourselves tonight and learned a few facts about plants that you can use to impress your family and friends and show them your drawing as well. If you want to do it again or you want to share the workshop with your friends, please print off the worksheet and do more plant life drawing in your own time or just re-watch this video uh, sometime in the future when the recording appears on our Great Exhibition Road Festival YouTube channel. So we're also going to be posting a link to a really quick survey where you could tell us what you thought about this event. We really love it when people tell us what we could do better, what they liked, what they didn't like. So if you could spare five minutes, we'd really appreciate it. So that's it from us today. I hope you keep an eye out for future family workshops from the Great Exhibition Road Festival. We're planning lots more this year, so do keep an eye out for those. And until then, have a great evening. Thank you to Kathy and Abby again and the wonderful team behind the scenes here and hopefully see you again soon.